Okay, brothers and sisters, Salakia, Salakia for that abrupt ending on part one of the video entitled, Can a Woman Teach? Um, again, uh, again, Salakia, Salakia in ancient Hebrew means forgive me. So um, I had not realized that the phone was going to cut off that shortly uh, in my recording time. So continuing on, um, again, looking at Genesis 3. Uh, the Fall of Man, um, as to, again, the, the video is entitled, Can a Woman Teach? Um, so, here we are. When we look at uh, Genesis um, chapter 3, verse 5, let's go to verse 5 again and head into chapter, in, uh, head into verse 6, like here. Uh, Genesis 3 and 5, For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the serpent, the serpent, the man of sin, had said to the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So in Genesis 3 and 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Obviously, the serpent is now causing the woman to doubt the, the law and commandment of the Most High God of Israel. Uh, we see, we notice in Genesis 3 and 3, that um, that the woman had said to the serpent, in uh, going back to verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the Most High hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, unless you die. Okay, so, and then in 3, 4 it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now, when, when you hear that, when, when, when you hear the serpent speaking that way, the man of sin, uh, as we explained in Isaiah 14, 12 through uh, for, uh, Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 14, 16, um, that uh, the serpent is a man, and in the earth he, he operates in a people, and that people, those people are, again, Esau, Edom, uh, which you can find in Malachi 1 and 4. Where it says, Esau, you shall be called the territory of wickedness. Wickedness is evil and evil doings. So um, the seed, the serpent has a seed again. Um, just just uh, 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 going back over the information that was in the video number one. Uh, as we bring it into video number two. And as you can see, in Genesis 3, 4, the serpent has entered, has caused doubt to enter into the, the mindset, the mind state and the mindset of the woman. By saying, ye shall not surely die. Now, again, as we stated in the video number one, um, this, the, the, <coughs> the, the Eve had never seen this man before. She had never spoken to this man. She had not received instructions from this man at all. She did not know this man from a can of paint. Yet, she is now, be, she is now doubting the word of, the word of the Most High, which is the law, which is the commandment, the ordinance and statutes. Uh, of the Most High God of Israel for the children of Israel, and she's now beginning to reason within herself, to think about it, and to think that it might be a possibility that she won't die. Okay, and as we can see here in Genesis three and five, um, the the serpent says unto says unto the woman, "For God does know that in that day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened." And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, watch, pay very close attention. Just pay very close attention to Genesis three and six. That that that, uh, that pay very close attention, very close attention to lock it to Genesis three and six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Now question. Out of all that information that she got. Here in Genesis 3 and 5 from the serpent. Again, never seen him before. Never received any instructions from him. Never received any warnings from him. Don't know him from a can of paint. She somehow is beginning to believe that that is the truth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. 
So now, so now, as you can see here, um, uh, 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 let's let, let's grab another scripture because I want to make a point, and I want to I want to I want to I'll get a scripture to prove that this is incorrect thinking in Genesis three and six. Um, let's let's look at that scripture one more time before we grab two other scriptures which speaks about wisdom. Genesis three and six, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Okay, now let's right now let's grab Proverbs nine and ten, because we're gonna find out what is what 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 will make us wise for real for real. Okay, and that's Proverbs nine and ten. Want to find out what is what what would make us wise? Okay, it says here, Proverbs nine and ten on your screen. It says, "The fear of the Lord power is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding." The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. Okay, let's grab Psalm one and one eleven and verse ten. Then we're, going, then we're going to discuss that for a few seconds, a few minutes. Uh, uh, and then we're going to begin to wrap this video up in less than three to four minutes from that point. Hopefully, Lord willing, uh, we can accomplish that. Okay, um, Psalm 119. Psalm 1, it's Psalm 111, verse 10. Okay, now. Psalm 111, verse 10, as I stated earlier, this particular Blue Letter Bible is very, very sensitive. You have one number or one uh, quotation mark or uh, a colon in the wrong spot. It, it, you, will, you will get nothing. <laughs> Psalm 111, verse 10. Okay. Uh, that's right there. Okay, now. Again, uh, linking Psalm 111, 10, even with our last precept or scripture of Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord power is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So, as you can see, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. So, if we have the fear of the Lord, we're going to do as he commands. Why? Because we don't want nothing to happen to us in the process. Uh, we don't want him to not, we, we, we want to continue to remain within his peace and his safety. Um, even even giving, a, a looking at an earth example, um, you know, when my dad, when I was younger, um, I was in middle school, elementary school, my dad used to say to me, and, and and my dad used to say to me, my dad used to say, all right, when I get off work today, I want your room clean. You know, and if your room is clean, you gonna go, I'm going to go ahead and give you the rest of the money to average your allowance so you can go ahead on and, and go buy them sneakers you want to buy uh, tomorrow when you go to town with your mom. And so I had fear, of, I, you know, or, or some, and sometimes it won't be sneakers as a reward. Sometimes it'll be um, a disciplinary effort. If you, if you if you don't have your room clean up by the time I get off work and get home at five six o'clock in the evening, then it's gonna be your tail. So by me by me knowing that my dad was not he was not making it up. It wasn't no folly. It wasn't no joke. So when by the time I so yeah of course my dad leaves. You know I might get back on my video games. I may eat something, I may, you know, look around, maybe watch a movie or two or something like that. But after about a good hour and a half, four, why if he gone, I'm going to get busy. Why? Because I know sometimes my dad will say that he's getting off at 5 or 6 o'clock, but he actually get off early at 1.30 and now I'm playing Flash Gordon, <laughs> trying to get this room together. It ain't going to work. I promise you it's not going to work. So because I had that fear... I'm not getting my not getting my sneakers um this weekend or I or I had that fear of what of what what disciplinary action or effort he might put upon me then I, what did I do I followed his commandments I kept his laws I leaving his house 
That's not my house. I lived there, but I lived at that time in his house. Okay, so I followed his laws. So again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So I'm so I'm curious right then and there, why is it that Eve at that point in time in Genesis chapter three, why is it that Eve had heard something that was said by a man that she had never seen, that had she'd never seen this man, she don't know this man from a can of paint, but somehow <laughs> she believed that this was the way to go, and it, and it contradicts everything that she had been taught, um, um, everything, and I'm and I'm more and I'm more than sure, in the period of time when Eve was in the garden with Adam, Adam had taken the time to explain to her the things that the Most High God of Israel had done for him in the garden, how he had provided for him in the garden, how he allowed him to name the animals, and how he ain't had no worries, he ain't had nothing to think about. And in the evening when the Most High came down at the beginning of a new day at sundown, that that how they talked and, and all the things they had discussed. So I'm more than sure. And then here come the serpent again. She had not received any edification on what the serpent had done, on how, whether or not the serpent was a blesser uh, or anything. But somehow she began to believe his way over the ways of the Most High God of Israel. So as you can see right then and there, um, she is not fit to teach because she can't receive anything. Um, she's going to always add something in to the word on top of what the word is. She's going to not, she's not even going to break it down correctly where you can understand. And here you are, got all this incorrect information in you, assuming that one day you might see the Most High God of Israel be saved. Not going to happen. Not gonna happen. Uh, it, let's let's get let's let's get something right quick that just came to my mind. Let's get a pretty girl. She's going nine. Okay. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. One and nine. Let's get a piece that's one and nine. Please ask one and nine states. Please ask one and nine says, the thing that has been, it is which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So if this was this way back then, it is this way now, and it's gonna be this way in the future. Why? Uh, let's let's get let's let's get one let's get one more scripture to back that up. Okay. Uh, let's get Ecclesiastes three and fifteen. Let's get that scripture. Let's get that scripture also. It's locked here. That's incorrect, y'all. Uh, Ecclesiastes E C C <laughs> three fifteen. Okay. Now Ecclesiastes three fifteen says, "That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been done, and the Most High requires that which is past." He requires that which is past. In other words, what happened long time ago is going to happen today and is going to happen in the future. Why? Because the Most High will not transgress his own word. He gave his own word. So he's not going to, he's, he, he's going to always follow his own laws. Why, but, why, but why does he require that which is past? Let's get another scripture. Let's find out why. Hebrews 13 and 8. It's a scripture I'm sure we all have heard before. But we need to use it in this lesson to prove this point. And that is, as you can see, Hebrews 13 and 8. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever. So our Lord and Savior is the same today. <laughs> He's the same yesterday, back then when this happened. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He cannot transgress his word. Let's get a precept on that right quick. Let's go to Matthew 24, 34. Okay. Let's get a precept on that right quick. Okay. All right. Now, uh, here we go. Matthew 24, 34 says, Verily, I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And then we see in the, in the next verse, Matthew 24, 35, 
Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. <laughs> my word shall not pass away. We are reading his word right now. It shall not pass away. And in that scripture, as you can see, heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth, we all know the earth is not going anywhere. So how can heaven and earth uh, pass away? Well, right now, the people who are in charge, who are in rulership on this earth right now, according to Deuteronomy 28, 48 through 64, those people are who? Esau, Edom. They will pass away as far as being in rulership over this kingdom so that the sons of Jacob can come on in and, and, and rule the kingdom. We are the righteous seed, you know, according to Genesis 17, 21. We are the righteous seed according to Genesis 21 and 12. We are the righteous seed. So if we are the righteous seed, we are to be ruling in the kingdom. You know, the kingdom is for us. It's for the sons of Jacob. For Yahweh Hamashiach will sit on the throne of David, rule, ruling, ruling from that point. Revelation 5, 5. Let's get that right quick also. Let's get that right quick. Revelation 5, 5. This is the Son of Man. This is our Lord, our Savior, our Rock, our Redeemer. Okay, he is the Son of the Most High God of Israel, the begotten Son. And he says in Revelation 5, 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, which means to look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Uh, hey, that, hey, that, yeah, you got it right there. And we all know that the tribe of Judah uh, which is the English transliterated word of the tribe Yahawadah, um, is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the tribe of Judah uh, right now is the tribe that are the Negroes in America. That's the tribe of Judah. Okay, so, and yes, uh, 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 of course, according to James 1 and 1, we're scattered to the four corners of the world, of the earth. But at the same time, that, that tribe was brought here into America to work these fields and to be put into slavery uh, of cotton and tobacco and tea and all the other stuff that, that was harvested here uh, in America, Babylon the Great. So as you can see, I hope this lesson has been edifying to you. Um, um, uh, uh, let, let's, uh, I, I want to bring up Psalm 119, 104 because... Um, there's some bearing in that in that precept that we can definitely pull from to help us understand. And Psalm 119, 104 says, Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Now, um, I, the reason why I brought that precept up to our attention is because everything that you've been taught so far in your lifetime, uh, in America, Babylon the Great, if you are of Christian descent, um, and, and, and you, and you, and you have come up in any church of any sort, AME, Baptist, I came up in AME church, uh, denomination, Pentecostal, everything that they teach is not what you just saw in, in these two lessons, because if it was, there would be no women preachers, there would be no women teachers, um, Jehovah Witness, they, they, they have women that go out in the field per se and they teach. Incorrect. <laughs> Incorrect. That's not. That's not correct. Uh, um. 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 Uh, um. That's just not correct. Uh, over the next couple of days, I plan to launch, to upload a few videos that's going to break down and going to show you what the scripture says versus what Christianity does. As you're going to see, pff, does not compute. Okay, does not compute. And 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 remember, this is the word. This is the word of the Most High. So. How is it that these individuals preach and teach? Okay, 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 okay. The only thing I can accomplish is that they preach and they teach. They preach and they teach, but they don't read. So if you don't read <laughs> and you can't quote these scriptures and you don't read these scriptures and break these scriptures down, then what you're telling the people is something that was made up that somebody added to and you were going to add to it. And, oh, I'm going to take that away because I don't like the sound of that. Well... Whose God is that? Ain't but one God that is, and that's the enemy. That's the devil. Why? Because the devil, the, the, the devil has no, no, he, he don't have his own word. He, he, nope, he don't have his own word. So, you know, so anything other contrary to the word of the most high is something that was made up 
and therefore they are they have now said that they are a god. Well, that's the same thing we read in Genesis 3 6. Let's go back there real quick and then we'll wrap it up. Wow, wow, this, that, that's the Holy Spirit right there. Genesis 3 6. Let's go back there again. Wow, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize I said that. Okay, uh, hold on. Let's see, there it is, Genesis 3 5. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay, uh, which is the saddest part about it, because when you know good, then you do good, but when you know evil, you're going to do evil. Well, doing evil is the easiest way for you not to be get, not, 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 not to get into the kingdom. That's the easiest way for you to meet the lake of fire, okay? So, moving right along, that's something that we need to do from that, okay? Um... Right now, uh, uh, let's go to Ezekiel 3. I have three more scriptures I'm going to bring up as I close out. And uh, then we will close the lesson off. Uh, that's Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel 3.17. Okay, Ezekiel 3.17. And I um, just want to check my volume on my phone. Sometimes I record and volume don't need to be nowhere near where it need to be. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel 317 right quick, and let's read that precept. Uh, exactly, it's actually Ezekiel 319. Uh, but we're going to start, let's start at Ezekiel 317. O son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. Okay, I've done that exactly. I've done that exactly. I, I, in these in this lesson, I've brought up the scriptures that prove to us that a woman cannot teach. And I went all the way into Genesis chapter 3 from the very beginning. And I have explained why she can't teach. Because she will, she will always want to reason out with the law. And she will always want to, uh, she's going to make a, a decision on what she feels is the, the commandment should say or should be based upon her her feelings, her emotions, and she's going to rationalize that word, you know, that, that law. And, and she cannot do that. Why? She didn't create anything. The Most High created her. And the Most High created her from, from a man. So, I mean, she comes up out of the loins of the man, should I say. Um, you know, so, I mean, she, she has no right. Who is she? Who is this lady? Okay. So, um... Who this lady is? So anyway, um, so I care for that. But anyway, now, so uh, we definitely can see that there. Um, uh, um, okay, getting back up. Okay, uh, Ezekiel three eighteen. When I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die. That's the second death. You shall surely die. And and you give him the end, Slaki. And you and thou givest him not warning. Nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So, in other words, what that scripture is trying to, what that scripture is saying, not trying to say, what that scripture is saying is that if I see you doing something wrong, and um, or, or you may not know the right way, okay, um, then. It is my job, if I know, and I have scriptures to back up and prove what I'm saying, then if I don't take the time to warn you and show you what the real deal is, the way it things should be done, then when, when the Most High comes down and judges this earth and you die in your iniquity, he going to look at me. Why you ain't tell us, man? <laughs> you know, I'm um, giving you an earthly example. If, if I know, if, I, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm walking down the street, and I know that, that, that they got some leaves in the street down there's a lot of leaves, a lot of straw because a lot of mud holes and stuff. And I know it is a big, super deep, giant hole down there that the leaves are covering up that could break your axle. What am I going to do? The only thing that I can do is warn you. Hey, man, look, hey, when you get down there in them leaves, man, let me tell you something. There's a lot of holes down there. And there's a lot of it's, it's a lot of leaves and straw down there that they got trying to cover up the mud holes so you at least you won't get bogged down. But man, listen, when you get down there, the best thing to do, you see the people been riding on the side. Man, ride right on the side, cause it's a big, super deep hole down there, man. It's going man, it it'll probably break your axle, man. That's that, that's about two thousand dollars. Brand new car, man. 
That, that's the least I can do. Now, if you go, now, if that man go down there and take his time and go around, weave around, fine, he good. But if that man go down there and say, man, that man didn't know what he's talking about, man, I've been riding on these roads all my life. And go down there and bam, bam, bing. Hey, did I want him? Yes, I want him. So I tried to avoid him falling into that hole, which, is, which would be a form of judgment, okay? Because judgment can be both good and bad. Okay, now, all right, Exodus, Salakia, <laughs> Ezekiel 3.19. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, his evil ways, evil doings, evil belief, evil thinking, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. In other words, I've, I, I've done my part. I've done what the Most High commanded me to do. And, and that is what I am going to do. It's just too easy to do that. Whether or not somebody's going to understand, whether, if they don't understand, they'll ask you questions, you'll break it down. Um, whether or not someone's going to believe you or take your word for it, who cares? As long as you do what the Most High commands you to do, you're in the good. You're in the clear. All right, now, let's go to Jeremiah 3.14. Um, after this, we have one more precept. And uh, we're going to close this thing out. I didn't want to do a three-minute video, but I don't want to do a 29-minute video either. <laughs> so, um, uh, Jeremiah 3.14. Okay, Jeremiah 3.14 says, Turn, O backsliding children, says the Lord Powell, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a, out of a city, I will take you one of a city, Slokia, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Again, turn, turn, return unto the Most High God of Israel. Um, the children of Israel are part of the Abrahamic covenant of Genesis 17 and 7. Um, what not so 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 we are to return unto him you know um that we we are part of a blood covenant the most high sent his begotten son yahweh shah hamashiach ignorantly called jesus to die on the cross for the remissions of sins for the children of israel so blood was shed for us to be reconciled and reconnected back with the most high god of israel um so the, the least you can do is return unto him you know, if you return unto him, you, you all that guilt that you have will be gone. Because at least you know you're doing things right. Are you trying to get yourself together? And and, and, and and you know you you could be in that number. You could definitely be in that number for a hopeful elect to be saved, okay? Uh, and our last precept is Jeremiah 2.19. Um, Jeremiah 2.19. Okay, we're going to go from there. Jeremiah 2, Jeremiah 2, 14 says, just like it, Jeremiah 2, 19 says, Thine own wickedness, evil ways, evil doings, evil, evil, evil beliefs, evil thinking, thinking that is not, that is not congruent, not in accordance, not, does not line up with the word of the most high. Okay. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy power and that my fear is not in thee. Of course, how can it be in you? Your fear, his fear can't be in you because if it was in you, then you would return, repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what got into me. <laughs> and, and, and begin to do things the way he says because John 14, 15 does say if you love him, you will keep his commandments, his laws. Okay. Um, uh, thine own wickedness shall correct thee, thine, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore, and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy power, and that my fear is not in thee, said the Lord, power of hosts. So, um, again, I hope that this lesson has been edifying to you. I hope that you learned something today. Um, if you did learn something today, and you did, and you now see in the scriptures that that a woman cannot teach, and you understand why she can't teach, um, then you definitely can say that Most High God of Israel, thank you for 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 teaching me this way and letting me know. Um, but right now, uh, if if it has been edifying, then you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way, you can be thoroughly edified at all times. Um, if you click the bell. Uh, uh, to receive all communication, then um, every every two every two days you should be receiving two to three videos from me. So um, I thank you right now. Um, Tawada, Yahawada.
Call Halayla Mihao, but she may have a shy, but she may have a cock Brakataya Hao, Brakataya Hao Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of faithful servants of Great Millstone who rule well, who risk their lives and freedoms to do so, pushing this gospel to the four corners of the earth. And salutations to the hopeful elect. All right? And until next time, be safe, be sober, be vigilant, pursuant to 1 Peter 5 and 8. And Shalom.